Howdy, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Good. Good to hear. Any, uh, <clears throat> anyone make any more money in stonks? <laughs> or is that, or is that pretty much over? <laughs> I pulled all my money out, uh, out of Robin Hood. I don't trust them anymore. Probably a good call. Does not look like they're gonna they're gonna let people make any actual money. <laughs> yeah, they're they're cheaters. I mean, that's kind of how it always struck me. But yeah, I hope you didn't you didn't lose anything, did you? Or no, 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 I I didn't. Okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> and even my sister was like trying to get me to invest too. <laughs> A lot of people are saying that the market's going to crash pretty soon, so it's scaring me. <clears throat> yeah, that's, I don't know. Yeah, that's the thing. It's, I feel like no one actually knows anything about any of this stuff. Oh, definitely not. You just hear, you just hear enough people say enough things and a few of them are going to be correct eventually, but yeah. <clears throat> but that is my extremely uneducated opinion, so. All righty. So, today we are going to cover planes. Okay. So planes in space. <clears throat> Just a second, it's warm here. Okay, so we saw to um, get the equation of a line, we need two things. We need a point on the line and we need a parallel direction. So you need a point in a direction, right? It needs to be a parallel direction. Um, yes, so uh, after class, um, I'll be moving over to uh, the office hour Zoom meeting, and then we'll have office hours directly after class today. Correct. Uh, the 12 four learning curve. Um, ooh, I have not assigned that, holy crap. Okay, uh, let me do that real quick. So, hang on. Oh, right. Um, yeah. So, twelve four learning curve. Um, somehow I forgot that. Uh, let's make that do, um, uh, let's make that do Tuesday. Let's make that do the end of tomorrow. 
those are those are relatively quick. Um, And then this one, I will make do. So it's going to be a couple days. Um, let's say end of uh, Wednesday. We'll finish it up on Wednesday. So let's do that. Let me assign those now. My bad. And then 12 for homework. So we. So I signed uh, 12 1 and 12 2 homework. Twelve three we finished up talking about on Thursday. So I'll make that do um, let's say let's say Friday. Let's say Friday because I assigned it slightly late. My bad, guys. I'll stay on top of this. OK, sorry about that. OK. All righty. So as I was saying, uh, for the equation of the line, we need a, uh, a point on the line. We need a parallel direction to the line, a vector which is parallel to it. We have those two pieces of information we can write the equation of the line. Uh, for a plane, um, things are similar, but a parallel direction is not going to cut it because for instance, Suppose um, we we know the origin, for instance. Suppose we know the origin is in a given plane. So we want to find the equation of plane. We know the origin's in there. And suppose we know um, that the vector i is parallel to our plane. <clears throat> so like, if you think of a uh, Right, your desk or something flat like this as being your plane, right? It's parallel if your vector points, um, not in the same direction, right? Because there are you know infinitely many vectors which are parallel, infinitely many directions. But suppose i is is parallel to our plane and the origin is in there. Well, there are actually infinitely many um, planes for which that is true, right? Uh, notice the x y plane contains the origin and the vector i is parallel to the xy plane. You can think of that as sort of the ground if you're looking in like the corner there. But similarly, so is the xz plane. And in fact, there are infinitely many planes which are parallel to a given vector, right? So if this is a vector, if this is a parallel vector right here, infinitely many planes, right? You can just rotate them like this Infinitely many planes are parallel to a given vector. So a point in a parallel direction is not enough to uniquely specify a plane, but a point in a perpendicular direction is enough. Let me say for the equation of a plane, we need a point on the plane and we need a vector which is orthogonal to our plane. And we call 
vectors which are orthogonal to planes, a normal vector. And we usually denote them as a vector n. So if we have, if we know a normal vector, um, let me draw this a little bigger. So if we know a vector, which is perpendicular to our plane, well, there are infinitely many planes which are perpendicular to that normal vector. Right? It's a whole family of planes perpendicular to that. But as soon as we choose a point, as soon as we find a point, there's only one plane which contains that point, which is orthogonal to that vector. <clears throat> so we need a point and an orthogonal vector to our plane. OK, so here's how we get the equation. So here's our plane. So suppose we know a point. P naught, we'll call that the point X naught, Y naught, Z naught. Um, hang on, let me put that like right here. We're going to use vectors again to derive the equation. So suppose uh, we have our point P naught. And the vector which starts at the origin and ends at the point P naught is R naught. And we know the normal vector n or we know a normal vector or see there are infinitely many normal vectors so what we want to do is we want an equation which can um, describe all the points on the plane So let's pick any point on the plane. So this is our point x, y, z. And R is going to be a position vector for that given point. So if we look at the position vector for any point on the plane, <clears throat> how do we relate R, R naught, and the normal vector n. Well, notice the vector r minus r naught. So remember, um, if you start two vectors at the same point, vector subtraction r minus r naught is a vector which starts at the negative one, ends at the positive one, right? So that is.
this guy here. Well, notice that guy is parallel to our plane, right? So if R minus R naught is parallel to the plane, what's the relationship between R minus R naught and the normal vector n, which is perpendicular to our plane? They're going to be orthogonal, right? <clears throat> so if two vectors are orthogonal, well, how do we check that two vectors are orthogonal? What's always true about orthogonal vectors? Their dot product, their, their dot product is zero, right? So that's true of any point you pick on there. <clears throat> and in fact, that describes all the points on the plane. So when we write that out, so we have, let me write that out again. We have r minus r naught dot n equals zero. That describes all the points on the plane. So we'll let n be the vector ABC. That'll be our normal vector. <clears throat> we said R is XYZ, the vector. Um, and R naught is the position vector for X naught, Y naught, Z naught. So R naught is the vector X naught, Y naught, Z naught. So we have XYZ minus X naught, Y naught, Z naught. dot abc equals zero. <clears throat> and this is the vector equation. Well, there's another way to write this. Actually, uh, the way this is usually written now I believe is uh, the following. So so the vector equation for the plane through the point. So x not y not d not is our known point. And we know a normal vector, right? An orthogonal vector ABC. So, um, right, we can just expand this out. The way it's usually written is. XYZ dot N is equal to a constant, right? So what we did was we just did a x, y, z minus x not y not z not dot the normal vector n. So we know uh, distributing through just like normal, that's x, y, z dot n minus x not y not z not dot n. And we just brought that x not y not z not dot n over. So any point on your plane, basically, any point x, y, z on your plane, when you dot the position vector with the normal vector, you get the same answer, some constant. And that constant is what happens when you dot the position vector for your known point with the normal vector. So that is. Um, it didn't drop out. It's it's just we could write that d. So the d is just a, like it's just um, position vector for your point dot the normal vector is equal to a constant. 
that constant is just exactly this right here, the x not y not z not dot your normal vector. It's 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 most useful to think of it as x not y not z not dot a normal vector, but that's that's a scalar, right? Your dot product. So this is not the most common equation. More commonly, we use um, sort of scalar equations. So plane through known point x naught y naught z naught. with normal vector <clears throat> uh, so what we do is so this guy right here if we write uh, xyz as a single uh, or sorry this stuff in here as a single vector we get x minus x naught y minus y naught z minus z naught, right? Just subtracting component component by component. Dot ABC equals zero. <clears throat> and taking the dot product, right? When we dot the two together, we get a scalar. And what we get, whoops, is the following. So we get a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught equals zero. That's what we get when we take this, when we write this dot product out right here. <clears throat> so you're gonna, we're gonna be running into planes over and over and over. You're gonna wanna have this memorized. So this is not the only form of the equation you'll see, but this is one of the most useful ones, right? Um, so if you know a point, and a normal vector, it's really easy to put it in this form because, uh, and, and looking at this is really nice because you can instantly tell what the normal vector is, right? A, B, C, you get here. Those are the coefficients of these guys. And instantly you can tell a point on your plane as well. So you got your X naught, Y naught, whoops z naught on there. So you get a point on your plane from this equation also. But this is not the only scalar equation. You could um, multiply through the parentheses and then collect your constants. So AX plus BY plus CZ. And then we have A times, so minus A times X naught, minus B times Y naught, minus C times Z naught equals zero. We can bring the constant over. And then this is also another form of the equation. So the equation of your plane is ax plus by plus cz. So that's you can still tell the normal vector immediately from the equation, but it's not so obvious what a point on the plane is. But for every single point, x, y, z, when you plug in x, y, and z into the equation, you get the same constant d. Well, it turns out 
D is still that same guy from before. Your, uh, the, the vector for your known point dot the normal vector. Okay. Um, any questions about this? We'll, we'll do some examples and it'll probably become more obvious what we're getting at here. Um, but any, any questions so far? Okay. Um, so once again, I want to emphasize Equations for planes are not unique. Right. Um, <clears throat> and that's for the same reason as lines. Um, if you have a normal vector, any vector parallel to your normal vector, any scalar multiple of a normal vector is also a normal vector. It's also going to be orthogonal to your plane. Right. So any scalar multiple of a normal vector is a normal vector, and that'll lead to a different looking equation. Right. That's essentially um, you're multiplying a, b, and c by a constant. It, it's essentially you're just you're multiplying both sides of the equation by some constant, which obviously that still describes the same points x, y, and z. <laughs> and if we're looking back at this first equation here. Um, you could pick any x not y not z not you want on the plane. And that would result in a different looking equation there. So just want to mention that quickly. Okay, so um, just a quick fact. So two planes are parallel. If their normal vectors are parallel. In other words, they're scalar multiples. So if two planes have normal vectors, which are scalar multiples of each other, then those two planes are parallel. In particular, if they have the same normal vector in the equation, then they're parallel. So for example, let's try to find the equation. Sure. So let's try to find the equation of the plane, which is parallel to the plane 7x minus 4y plus 2z, 
equals negative 10. So all we know about our plane is it's parallel to this one plane. And we know a point on the plane. Oops. We know it goes to the point 2, negative 1, 3. Okay, so gonna drill this over and over. Um, what two things do we need for the equation of a plane? <clears throat> every problem, every single problem where you need to look for the equation of a plane, you need to find these two things. If you can find these two things, you can get the equation easily. So we need a point. And uh, I would not call it a slope. A slope is, for a line, a slope kind of gives a, a parallel direction. Uh, for a plane, you, you want a normal vector. I think you have the right idea, but that's not what I would call it. Yeah. So we're given a point. That's nice. Uh, our, our known point here is 2, negative 1, 3. Not always given a point, but sometimes you got to find it. Here, we're just given it. It's a vector, not vector. That's not helpful at all. Normal vector. <clears throat> and we're told it's parallel to the plane 7x minus 4y plus 2z equals negative 10. So if it's parallel to this guy, then the normal vector for 7x minus 4y plus 2z equals negative 10 is also a normal vector for this plane, right? If two planes are parallel, a vector which is orthogonal to one is also orthogonal to the other. So it works as a normal vector. So what's, what's a normal vector for uh, the plane we're looking for? So remember, right, right. So the stuff multiplying x, y, and z, the, the coefficients, are the components of your normal vector. So this 7, negative 4, 2. That is a normal vector. So we have a point, we have a normal vector. We can stick it in our equation, right? So we get seven um, x. So we know it's going to be seven times x minus something um, minus four times y minus something, and then plus two times z minus something equals zero is one way we can write the equation. The 7, negative 4, 2 come from the normal vector. And then we use the known point to get x minus whatever, y minus whatever, z minus whatever. So x minus 2 is the x-coordinate, y minus negative 1, so y plus 1 for the y-coordinate, and z minus 3 for the z-coordinate. So that is a perfectly valid equation for our plane. Um, but if, for instance, you had like multiple choice or something, or we wanted it specifically in sort of the same form as this one is, 7x minus 4y plus 2z equals some constant, then we could write it like that. So you could either expand this out and bring your constant over to the other side, or sort of a shortcut. Not really a shortcut, but sort of useful to think about. Is um, so remember your d here? 
is the dot product of your known point and your normal vector. So if we take the dot product of two negative one three, so that's the position vector for our known point, dot seven negative four two. When we do that, we get uh, 14 uh, plus 4 and then plus 6. So we get 24. That's another way to write the equation. And if you forget, if you forget this bit, that you can dot the normal vector and the uh, the position vector for the known point, you could just expand this out, right? We get the same thing. So you get uh, 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. Negative 1, wait. Yes, uh, negative 14 minus 4 minus 6, and then just bring your constant over, and you get the 24. Sorry, was that clear? Does everyone see how we get from one of these guys? So how we get from this, this first equation to this one? Like in an exam, you can use either one of these. I would suggest just sticking with this one because there's less, fewer steps. It's quicker, fewer things to mess up also. But um, if you have to put it in the other form, that's how you go from one to the other. Does that? Makes sense. Okay. Silence as a yes. Okay. So usually your life is not going to be quite that simple for finding the equation of a plane. Usually you're going to have to do a bit more work. So for instance, here's another common type of question. So um, we could give uh, three points on a plane which don't lie on the same line. And those uniquely define a plane. So suppose we just give you three points and ask you to find the equation of a plane. So find the equation of the plane, which goes through the points P, which is 1, 0, negative 1, Q, which is the point 2, 2, 1, and R, let me emphasize these are points which is the point 412. Okay. <clears throat> so, again, what two things do we need to find the equation of a plane? All right, we need a point and a normal vector. So usually one of these is going to be relatively easy, and the other one will take a bit of work. OK, point easy. We have a plethora of points, right? We can pick either P, Q, or R. Any one of those will work. So let's just pick P. We know that. Normal vector is what we need to figure out to get the equation. So here's how we're going to do that. Suppose this is our plane. And we know three points on the plane 
which don't lie on the same line. Uh, that bit's important because if you have three points which lie on the same line, um, they're actually infinitely many points, uh, infinitely many planes which contain those points, right? You could just rotate your plane around that line containing those, and all of those planes contain all three. But if they don't lie on the same line, if they're non-collinear, um, they uniquely define a plane. So we have three points. How do we take three points and turn them into a, a, uh, a normal vector? How do we get a vector orthogonal to our plane from these three points? What do we need to do? So not quite, not quite. So I'll give you a hint. So consider the vectors PQ and PR. <clears throat> right, exactly, Thomas. Remember, if you have uh, if you have two vectors, and you want to find a third vector which is orthogonal to both of those vectors, you take the cross product of the two vectors, right? So if we take the vectors P, Q, and P, R, both of these guys are parallel to our plane. And so when we take the cross product, we get a third vector, which is orthogonal to both of those and thus orthogonal to the plane. So, We let our normal vector be the cross product of PQ and PR, the vector from P to Q and the vector from P to R. It doesn't matter if you did PQ cross PR or PR cross PQ or RP cross PQ or any one of those. It doesn't matter. They're all going to result in a normal vector. <clears throat> Does everyone see why that's the case? Right. The important bit is that you look at this problem and you understand how you find the normal vector. So the vector PQ, let's calculate these real quick. So P is 1, 0, negative 1, Q is 2, 2, 1. What's the vector from P to Q? So remember, you go component by component, and you look at, we start at P, we end at Q. How has the X coordinate changed? Well, we've gone from 1 to 2. It's increased by 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. Um, so the Y coordinate, we've gone from 0 to 2. 2 minus 0 is 2. And the Z coordinate, we've gone from negative 1 to 1. 1 minus negative 1 is also 2. So that's PQ. So what's our vector PR? Right, we get uh, 3, 1, 3. So a normal vector uh, so we're just looking for a vector which is orthogonal to our plane so we just know three points on our plane so uh, we know the vector from so if you if you have two points on a plane right the vector which starts at one and ends at um, another point on the plane is going to be parallel to the plane, right? So I have a point, another point. Look at the vector which starts at one point, ends at the other. That's going to be parallel to your plane. Similarly, the vector PR is also parallel to our plane. So we have two vectors which are parallel to our plane. We want a vector which is orthogonal to our plane. So when we take the cross product of these two vectors, 
we get a third vector, which is orthogonal to both of those, and thus is orthogonal to our plane. Okay. Yeah, it's important that you, you understand that process there. Okay, so our cross product is going to be um, 1, 2, 2, cross 3, 1, 3. So that's PQ cross PR. It's really quickly. And just so we don't forget, to do your plus minus plus. So we get I cross out the wrong column, take the uh, determinant, so 2, 2, 1, 3. Minus j, don't forget the minus. Cross out the wrong column, take the determinant, uh, 1, 2, 3, 3. And then plus k, cross out the wrong column, take the determinant, 1, 2, 3, 1. So determinant of uh, 2, 2, 1, 3 is 6 minus 2, which is 4. Determinant of uh, 1, 2, 3, 3 is 3 minus 6, which is negative 3. And determinant of uh, 1, 2, 3, 1 is 1 minus 6, which is negative 5. So I'll write it out, but. So we get 4 times i minus negative 3 times j minus 5k. I usually like to write it just in this form because it's a little quicker. So that's 4 minus negative 3, which is 3. Negative 5 is our normal vector. So now we have a normal vector, and we have a point. Let me erase this here. So we said 4, 3, negative 5 is a normal vector. If you took the cross product in the opposite order, you'd get negative 4, negative 3, 5. That's also fine. It'll give you a different equation, but it'll still be an equation for your plane. And so we put these two together. We get 4, 3, negative 5. So our known point is 1, 0, negative 1. So x minus 1 plus 3, y minus 0. So 3y. If you like, you can do the y minus 0. It doesn't matter. Uh, minus, let me move this closer. Minus 5z minus negative 1, so z plus 1, equals 0. And that's the equation of our plane. So I want to emphasize this is actually a, a common mistake a lot of people make um, is um, you'll people will forget the equals zero part, right? And they'll just write like this first bit here. Um, if you don't have equals zero, it's not an equation, right? So 4x minus 1 plus 3y minus 5z plus 1 by itself is a function, but it's not an equation of a plane. So you can't forget the equals zero part. That bit is important. Yes. So that's that's 
the thing, it doesn't matter which point you choose, Natalie. Um, you can choose any one of the points and you'll get a correct equation. So I could have chosen um, the point Q and put those in and it would be a different equation. It would look different, but it would still be a correct equation. So there are actually infinitely many equations because you can pick any point you want on the plane. Is that good, Nicholas? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, so, right, I, I could also do, uh, if I wanted, so for, let's pick the point Q, X minus two plus three, Y minus two minus five, Z minus one equals zero. That's another valid equation for our plane. Both are correct. Also, um, if you want to write it in the other form or say it's like a multiple choice or something. So we get uh, 4x plus 3y minus 5z. So you could just collect your constants or you could do the normal vector dot any one of the points, you get the same answer. So if we did 4, 3, negative 5 dot um, 1, 0, negative 1, we would get uh, 9. And that's also another way to write the equation of our line. And you can actually check if you like. You could pick P, Q, or R. Take the position vector for any of those. When you dot them with the normal vector, you get nine. Doesn't matter which one. Okay. Uh, any questions about anything from today? You said when we're finding a normal equation, we could also do. So I could have done like Q, the vector Q P cross Q R. Um, correct. Like as long as your cross product, um, just so Drew, uh, you're, you're absolutely correct. Um, that was, I'm not sure how that happened. Uh, so I said I would make that do Wednesday, right? Yes. Uh, so that is now due Wednesday. My bad. Sorry about that. Yeah. So as long as your cross product involves all three points, doesn't matter at all what order. So you could do like PQ cross RQ or PR cross uh, QP or whatever, like any one of those, as long as it involves all three points, is it's going to result in something which works. But yeah, it's easiest just to do PQ, PQ cross PR. Yeah. You're always just going to get a scalar multiple of, of the same thing each time. Any other questions? Okay, um, so that's it for today. Um, we will finish covering uh, planes on Wednesday and we might start the next section. Um, we shall see, but yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna go over to um, the office hour Zoom meeting and uh, if you have any questions on homework or anything, please come over. And uh, if not, then I will see you guys on Wednesday. Have a good one, guys. Thank you.